Okay, uh, to remind you a bit, we looked at uh, transmission media and uh, and we looked at UTP and STP as some types of trusted pair cables. So we said that you cannot transmit data unless you have what we call the transmission media. And we said that we've gotten what we call trusted pair cables as one of the transmission channel or media and under trusted pair cable, we have what we call unshielded trusted pair cable and we have shielded trusted pair cable. So uh, we looked at each of them, how they look like, the advantages of each, the differences between the two and so now today we are going to look at coaxial cables and optic cables. But before we actually proceed, I want to share my screen. Can I request the host allow me share the screen? We said we looked at uh, the twisted and under twisted, we looked at shielded and unshielded. And we said that the differences between the two, the first one, shielded twisted pair cable, uh, is actually more resistant to interferences and compared to the unshielded. Unshielded is cheap, but is not resistant to to external interferences. Then the other difference or the other advantage of unshielded, unshielded, we've said that unshielded twisted pair cable is cheap compared to, to others, even the shielded inclusive. Then we'll also say that unshielded is easy to install and to handle is very easy to install and to handle. However, unshielded has gotten some disadvantages. For example, we said it is prone to external interferences. Then there is also that problem of security. You're unable to provide secure transmission of data when you're using unshielded. The other one is about the- Excuse me, I can't see your screen. Oh, Okay, let me share the screen again. Briefly, a minute. Okay, as we wait for the screen, we can continue with our recap. It is just a review of the previous lesson. So I assume that you already know what we are discussing now about the shielded and the unshielded. So I was saying that when you're dealing with unshielded, it is first of all cheap and easy to install However, you expect a lot of interferences. And apart from interferences, it is also prone to crosstalks. And we said that we do not have unshielded and shielded only as the transmission media or channels. We also have what we call coaxial cables and optic cables. So it is what we are going to look at now. 
unfortunately i can't share my screen let me wait for the host to allow me share the screen then i share i want us to watch some video about coaxial cables and uh, you you prepare a notebook and a pen so you note down some lessons you'll be getting from that video about coaxial cables then we shall explore it in details then after we shall also look at optic fiber cables we'll also learn something from the video and then later we explore what we'll be having on my slides and my presentation All right, it is okay now. I am sharing the screen. I hope you can all see my screen now. Yes. All right, let's get prepared. This video is about coaxial cables and some other common connectors. I want us to be keen enough, learn something, learn something out of the video, then you will share with us. Everyone will have to share about anything he or she has learned from this video. Hello, and this is Sunny. Welcome back. Different types of network and keyboards are used to connect different devices. In networking, the most common keyboards include coaxial keyboard, twist pair, optical fiber, and parallel or serial keyboards. Their uses depends on the networking topology, hardware, software, and the network size. Networking keyboards, connectors, and their specifications belong to the physical layer or layer one of the OSI model. Today, my topic is coaxial cable and some common connectors. First, let's look at the structure of the coaxial cable. The outer cover is a PVC or fine resistant plastic called sheath. The braided metal shielding reduces electromagnetic interference or EMI. Underneath the shielding is the PVC or Teflon insulator. The central metal core is the copper conductor. Coaxial cable is used to carry high frequency electrical signals with low losses. It is commonly used in the telephone system, broadband internet, high speed computer data buses, cable TV, and internet. There are hundreds of specifications, but most types of coax cable use RG number. RG stands for radio guide. Each type serves different purposes. RG6 coax cable, for example, is a typical at home if you have a cable TV or cable internet. Coax cables are also rated in ohm for their impedance or resistance. An ohm is a unit of resistance to the flow of electrical current through a circuit. Over time, the industry has settled on 50 ohm and 75 ohm for the vast majority of applications. Coax cable looks similar to each other. It is not easy to tell their difference by their physical appearance or size. The best method is to read the product label or simply text on the cable. There are many types of connectors. Here are a list of four common connectors. BNC connectors. BNC stands for British Naval Connector or Bayonet Nail Consignment. Nail Consignment 
refers to two persons who invented this type of connectors. But don't worry about what BNC stands for. It is good enough if you recognize them next time you see them. The N connectors, also called type N connectors, they are weatherproof RF connectors. They are capable of carrying microwave frequency signals. SMA connectors. SMA stands for Subminiature Version A. SMA connectors are often used in high frequency microwave and Wi Fi systems. F type connectors are normally used to connect to the cable modem if you have a cable TV or cable internet. RG6 cable is normally terminated with F type connectors. Compared with twist pair cables, which I will cover in my next video, coax cables carry signals much further and are better shielded from crosstalk. Twist pair cables provide a much higher transmission rate than coax cables in general. For example, CAT 6E or CAT 7 twist pair cables can carry up to 10 gigabits per second. Coaxial cables are highly resistant to signal interference, but they are more expensive and harder to install. Twist pair cables are flexible and thus more commonly used on the Ethernet networks and telephone systems. I hope this video is helpful. Thank you very much and see you next time. All right, can I have a few of you discuss with us what you've learned from what you've gotten from that from that video? Anifa Hope, can you share with us what you've gotten from that from the video? Oh, the English was too much. <laughs> Hope, have you gotten anything from the video? You can either share with us. I have learned the types of connectors. Yes, what are those types? There is BCN, mm. which stands for British Neural Connector. Mm. There is any. Mm. and SMA and F type. All right, thank you, Anifa. I think those ones who have been vigilant enough have seen those connectors before, especially on the TV. There are some connectors that are actually connect to the TV and to TV cables. So if you've seen, if you've been vigilant on the on the TV at home, you've seen these connectors. Even on, uh, even some are connected on the decoders. Yeah, on the decoders. All right. So I want us to look at the coaxial cables here in the presentation. We we'll get to know what these cables are. How many layers do these cables have? And 
the advantages, disadvantages, where they are used, and so on. I hope you, you can see my screen. Yes. Okay. Coaxial cables, let me have someone read for us this slide. Yes, I'm not seeing the slide. Are you able to see it now? No. Sure, you're not seeing. You're not seeing anything on your screen. Here, I see. Me too. I'm seeing. Okay, Ben, can you read for us what is in, on your screen? What cable consists of a single copper wire surrounded by at least three layers. Mm. Accomplish the whole slide. An insulating material, a woven thick outer coating. All right, thank you. So when you look at coaxial cables, uh, it is first, this kind of cable is actually made out of copper. It is a single copper wire, so you expect copper as an input for, for coming up with this cable. So it is made out, out of copper and uh, remember for transmission, copper uses electrons. So electrons are going to be used here and under coaxial cable for transmission. And it is mainly surrounded by three layers. There, there is what we call an insulating material. There is what we call a braided metal and the outer coating that is normally plastic. So cable TV wiring often uses coaxial cables because they can be cabled over long distances than twisted pair cable. So when we looked at twisted pair cable, we we said that it is not normally used for longer distances. So when you compare the two cables, crested and coaxial, coaxial can actually be used for longer distance compared to crested. And that's why it is these cables, the coaxial cables are often used in TV wiring. So, TV wiring is basically basically use coaxial cables. If you may need to know where coaxial cables are used. So we look at how these cables look like. The coaxial cables. So this the first one that has gotten the parts are. The first one, we have outside insulation, copper mesh. So this is, these are the illustrations for the coaxial cables. One is, one is the whole thing, then the other one is showing you the parts that are inside the cable. So you can see the cable on your right. Then the one on the left is showing you what is inside. The one on the, on the left. So that's how the coaxial cables look like. So if you come across such cable, you get to know that that is the coaxial cable. So we look at the advantages, advantages of coaxial cables. Uh, one, because we've said coaxial cables have gotten three layers, these these layers are going to make it more heavily 
So quark shock cable is insulated more heavily than twisted pair cable. And since it is insulated heavily, they are not going to be more interferences than like in, in uh, twisted pair cable. So interferences under quark shock cable are going to be few because it is able to, to be resistant to, to those interferences. So do not expect signal interferences. The network will be clear compared to those to, to the, the other one that uses preset prayer cables. Then the other advantage is that for coaxial cable, uh, you can use this kind of cables for longer distances, as long as that distance is between 300 and 600. So you have to note that if the distance exceeds 600, then you will opt for some other cable. But at least for this distance, coaxial cables got you covered. Then it also transmits faster than UTP. So the transmission rate of coaxial cables is a bit high compared to the UTP. UTP is unshielded detrusted pair cable. So if you consider the speed at which data is being transmitted uh, for coaxial, it is going to be higher than the one that uses UTP. So that's another advantage of coaxial cables. Then the other one is easy to install and maintain. So as you're installing these, these uh, cables, it is very easy for you to install and maintain. Just like we say that these coaxial cables are normally used for TV wiring. Anyone can wire out a TV if that person has, got a, has gotten a chance of seeing how they do it. Even if you're not literate enough in that field, you can try it out and get it installed. Apart from the advantages, coaxial cables have gotten also some disadvantages and the, the first one is heavy and bulky. Remember we said these cables have gotten a lot of layers so um, these layers uh, add something on the, on the bulkiness of that cable. So you find them heavy and bulky. If you're transporting very many of them, you'll need more and more costs. Then the other one is about longer distance. Which longer distance? Remember we said Quarkjo is for, can go up to 600 meters. So if the distance exceeds 600 meters, then you will need a booster to boost out this, these cables. So needs booster over longer distances. Longer distances, that is longer than 600 meters. Then the other disadvantage is about the cost. If you compare twisted pair cable and uh, coaxial cable price-wise, you'll find out that twisted is actually cheaper than coaxial. So making it a disadvantage for, for coaxial. So it is expensive as compared to the twisted pair cable. The other disadvantage is about damage. Remember this is a single copper wire. We said coaxial cable is a single copper wire. So if it is only one, a single independent wire, if it gets damaged, it means that the entire network is going to go down because there is no option for, for, for that. It is only one and it is the one that has gotten the, the damage. So it gets a damage. the whole network will come to an end. Jotham, 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 your hand is up. You wanna say something? The, the hand is up, but 
he has no mic. Okay. Jotham, you wanna ask something? I know he's not hearing us because the mic is off. Oh, okay. Oh, my battery is low in. I don't have power here. Okay. So that's what we can talk of about the, the coaxial cables. Uh, can I have anyone have raise a question? If you have any question about coaxial cable. If no question, we can. Oh, some someone is putting up the hand, Nicholas. Excuse me, teacher. Mm. So we don't copy the notes. You are going to send them in the group, or I will copy mm. them. No, I'm going to send the notes in the group. Okay. So you maybe you, you want to note anything, but the notes I'm going to send in the group. All right. Uh, any question? No question about the coaxial cables. Okay. If there is, if there is no question, allow me share this video. If my battery gets done, then we start from there next time. Oh, my power is back. Okay. So I'm going to share a video about optic. What's not a penny? Okay, sorry for that, uh, I had gone off. So we are still looking at coaxial cables and I was asking if there is any question about coaxial cable. Jotham, your hand is up, you wanna ask anything? If, if your mic is not working well, then you put the question in the chat. I, I will read that question. If there is no question about the coaxial cable, we can be discussing about the optic cable as I connect my computer here to share the screen. So the optic fiber cables, are going to be compared with coaxial. Remember we've said coaxial 
uses electrons and that is copper, single copper wire. So as we talk of optic, optic fiber cable, uh, this is going to be basically dealing with light. So these cables are uh, basically use light and uh, they are very small, like you can compare it with a uh, human hair. They are very small and therefore you will need to, to, to add more than two to come up with a, with a, a, a single cable, not like work draw where it is only one, one copper single wire. So for optic, we'll be discussing about the advantages. The first advantage you can talk of under optic fiber cable, you talk of the speed. We all know that light actually is faster than, than the electrons which are in the copper. So if you compare coaxial and optic fiber cables in terms of uh, speed, then the optic fiber cables are going to run faster. So the speed is very fast. And about the interferences, you will not get interferences when you're using optic fiber cables. And um, actually, if you look at uh, the crosstalk has another interference. You also don't get it under fiber optic. However, it is very expensive that this kind of cable is very expensive. So you expect a lot of you expect expect spend a lot of money when you're using these cables and apart from that the installation is also hard to install this these cables is very difficult and expensive as well so it will need a specialist work on it A minute, a minute, please. All right, all right, all right, we are back. Okay, let me share the, the screen. We look at the slides of uh, optic fiber. You can ask any question as we await for this to load.
Okay, I hope you're able to see my screen. So we said that fiber optic cable involves that strand, each strand called an optic fiber is a thin, is as thin as human air. So each optical fiber is surrounded by an insulating glass. And uh, basically this is used, fiber optic cables are used of uh, long distance connections uh, that is, for example, you can look at telephone company, cable TV and high traffic networks. So, as we're using the, the phones, companies, the telephone companies do use optic fiber cables to, to connect and the illustration, we can look at how these cables look like from the screen. So that is how. So that's how the optic fiber cables look like. If you've come across any that looks like that, you just get to know that that's the optic fiber cable. There are different illustrations as you've seen. The first one is uh, open, then these ones are the, the ones that are already made that are out, that are not opened. So the advantages we've, I talked of some, and here we have more signals. So these cables, optic fiber cables, carry a lot of signals. And if you look at the transmission, data transmission is very fast when you're using optic fiber cables, and then they are less vulnerable to electrical noise from other devices. That's yeah, that's the interference as you cannot, it is very hard to get interferences when you're getting, when you're using fiber optical cables. Then the other part of the security, you'll be assured of security as you're using these, these cables. So the signals will be safe smaller size and much thinner and lighter than other cables. Remember we said coaxial cables are bulky and heavy. So it's not the same case with fiber optic cables. These cables are light, they are small and therefore they are light to be transported. It has gotten uh, some disadvantages. The first one you think of is expensiveness, the cost. These cables are the most expensive cables. So um, the cost for this is much and then the installation is hard because of the size and their mode of have production then more difficult and expensive to splice. So someone might ask, what splice means. Remember we said uh, these fiber optic cables are very small like human hair. So human hair. So you will need to add to connect like two or three cables to come up with um, with one. So the, the process of connecting two or more is what we call splice then it cannot be necessarily connecting them. If one gets damaged and we want to bring them back together, you will also, that process is also called splice. So that's the meaning of splice. So I want us to look at uh, some video as, as we end our engagement but you can ask any question.
you can ask any question about fiber optic. Shivilika, do you have any question? No. Yeah. Teacher. Yeah, I wanted to ask, uh, banana pin is an example of fiber optical. Okay. So uh, these cables, uh, some of these cables are difficult to differentiate by mere looking at them. But when you look critically to, to them, or when you try to remove the, for example, if you remove the, the outer layer, you can get to know that these are either optical or coaxial cables. Any other questions? So, uh, Anich, you can you can take that initiative, initiative, and then get to us later or in the next engagement. Right. I, I was just trying to ask. Uh, banana pin is an example of optical optical fibers. Oh, okay, you just want a yes or no. When you look at banana pins, when you look at, at what we call fiber optical cables, we have said that they actually contain thousands of other fibers inside. And if you compare it with the, what you're asking, the banana pins, I think it can follow in that range. So if you if you look at the coating of the, the pin you're talking of, I think it also goes under that that category. Mm, any other question? Hope. Yes, teacher. No question? No. Okay. Okay, let us watch this video. Let me share the screen. watch this video as we end our engagement. Are you able to see my screen? No, we aren't seeing. Not yet. Let me reshare again. Are 
Are you seeing it now? No. no. Oh, what's wrong with my screen? No, I am not seeing it. <clears throat> Oh, okay. How about now? We are. Right, kindly watch this as we end our engagement. How you get emails or any other information from any corner of the world within a blink of an eye? This has been made possible by a network of cables which are laid under the ground and below the ocean. The cables, which carry most of the world's data, are optical fiber cables. They are also used in medical equipment. Let's learn how optical fiber cables work and how they have revolutionized the world around us. Optical fiber cable is made up of thousands of fiber strands, and a single fiber strand is as thin as a human hair. Optical fibers carry information in the form of light. Let's first learn some fundamental behaviors of light to understand the workings of optical fibers. The speed of light changes when it passes through a medium, and this change in speed is expressed by the refractive index. This variation in the speed of the light leads to another interesting phenomenon, refraction. To understand what it is, let us carry out an interesting experiment. In this experiment, light passes through a prism. You can see that at the interface, the light gets bent instead of going straight. This phenomenon is known as refraction. Refraction occurs when light passes from a medium with one refractive index to one with another refractive index. The light bends towards the interface when it goes from a The reason why a pencil looks bent in a glass of water this simple refraction technique is effectively used in optical fibers. Now, let's make this experiment a hypothetical one. Using some dopants, we are able to increase the refractive index of the glass in real time. As we increase the refractive index, the light will bend more and more towards the surface. After a time, you can see that the light will pass through the surface of the glass. If we increase the refractive index further, the light will suddenly come back to the first medium as a pure reflection. This is called total internal reflection. The total internal reflection is possible if we increase the incident angle rather than increasing the refractive index. In this case, at a certain angle called the critical angle, the light will come back to the first medium. This phenomenon of total internal reflection is used in optical fiber cables to transmit the light. The simplest form of optical fiber cable is shown here, cylindrical glass with a high refractive index. If the laser strikes the interface at an angle greater than the critical angle, total internal reflection will happen and the light will reach the other end. This means that light can be confined in the optical fiber over a long distance, no matter what complex shape the fiber forms. Remember, total internal reflection happens between the high refractive index glass and the low refractive index air. However, optical fibers need a protective coating. A protective coating is not possible with this configuration. The introduction of protective material will replace the position of the air and cease the total internal reflection phenomenon. An easy way to overcome this issue is to introduce a low refractive index glass above the core glass, known as cladding. This way, total internal reflection will happen and we'll be able to use a protective layer. Both the core and the cladding use silica as their base material. The difference in the refractive index can be achieved by adding different types of dopants. The optical fiber we have just constructed won't be able to carry signals for more than 100 kilometers. This is due to various losses that happen in the cable. 
This loss of signal strength is generally called attenuation. Absorption and scattering are the main reasons for signal attenuation. This is why you see amplifiers and cables after a certain distance. They boost the signal strength and allow signals to be transmitted over a long distance. The power required for the amplifier is drawn from nearby sources. Now, back to the main topic. How does the optical fiber transmit information such as phone calls or internet signals? Any information can be represented in the form of zeros and ones. Assume you want to send a hello text message through your mobile. First, this word will be converted into an equivalent binary code as a sequence of zeros and ones. After the conversion, your mobile phone will transmit these zeros and ones in the form of electromagnetic waves. One is transmitted as a high frequency and zero as low frequency wave. Your local cell tower picks up these electromagnetic waves. At the tower, if the electromagnetic wave is of high frequency, a light pulse is generated. Otherwise, no pulse is generated. Now, these light pulses can easily be transmitted through optical fiber cables. The light pulses which carry the information have to travel through a complicated network of cables to reach their destination. For this purpose, the entire globe is covered with optical fiber cables. These cables are laid under the ground and below the ocean. It is mainly the mobile service providers that maintain these underground cables. AT&T, Orange, and Verizon are some of the few global players who own and maintain the submarine cable network. A detailed cross-section view of an undersea cable is shown here. You can see that only a small portion of the cable is used for holding the optical fiber. The remaining area of the cable is a mechanical structure for protection and strength. Now, the question is, where does the amplifier get power from under these deep oceans? Well, for this, a thin copper shell is used inside the cable, which carries electric power along the cable so that the amplifiers can be powered. This whole discussion simply means that if optical fiber cables do not reach a part of the globe, that part will be isolated from the internet or mobile communications. If we compare optical fiber cable to traditional copper cable, the optical fiber cable is superior in almost every way. Fiber optic cables provide larger bandwidth and transmit data at much higher speeds than copper cables. This is because the speed of light is always greater than the speed of electrons. The flow of electrons in a copper cable generates a magnetic field, even outside of the cable, that can cause electromagnetic interference. On the other hand, the light, which travels through the optical cable, is always confined within the fiber. Thus, the chance of interaction with an external signal does not exist. One more interesting feature about optical fiber cables is that any light signal which enters from the side has a minimal chance of traveling along the cable. Thus, the optical fiber cables provide high data security. You might be amazed to know that optical fiber was first used in endoscopy, even before it was used in the telecommunications field. In telecommunications, digital pulses are transferred through the optical fiber cable. However, in endoscopic cables, visual signals, which are in the analog form, are transmitted to the other end. We request your support at Patreon.com to help us continue our education services. And thank you for watching the video. Okay, I think we've picked something from that video. So basically it summarizes what we've discussed about optical fiber cables. Uh, they use light and uh, this will make the transmission of data very high, that the rate it will be very high at which data is transmitted. And there will be no interferences as to, to copper coaxial cables and twisted cables, so you do not expect interferences when you're using the optical fiber cables. So if there is no question, no more questions, I would request we stop here for today. Excuse me, madam. Yes, please. Yeah, I wanted to inquire about the Optify cables. About? Like, how, how about those cables? I would mm -hmm. like more light about them. 
enlighten me about the cables. About the cables. Oh, I've got to where. I just need more light about the cable. Okay, briefly, briefly, we said that when transmission of data needs cables, you can either use wired or wireless. So wired transmission will need cables and uh, the cables we've looked at, we have twisted pair cable, we have optical fiber, and then we have coaxial cables. So all these cables are used for data transmission. That is one. Then what you will need to know is how each cable look like. Then you know the advantage of each cable. Uh, then the difference between the, the, these cables. So the first cable we looked at was twisted pair cable. And we said that this twisted pair cable are uh, actually categorized. Yes, twisted. I'm just giving a summary because we already discussed this. We twisted, we said that is we okay. have we have unshielded and shielded. Yeah. So we said that shielded look like that. And this is the shielded unshielded. Unshielded looks like that. So the difference between shielded and unshielded is simple. For shielded, do you know what a shield is in Uganda? Do you know? In Uganda, shield I hear it is called a wire So for shielded twisted pair cable, there is an, yeah, there is that added added layer that is basically for protection. That, 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 that hmm? yeah. Then for, for unshielded, yeah, get. yeah, for unshielded, it has got a know that layer. So that is okay. the difference between the two. And from okay. this slide, from this slide, you can see the difference between the two. This this one, there is no shielding. So this is the unshielded. Twisted pair cable. Then this one with the shielding. This is the shield we are talking of. That is the shielded twisted pair cable. So okay. we said that the unshielded, since there is no that layer for protection, there will be interferences in the signals. So you expect interferences in your signals for unshielded, which is not the same case for shielded. So then we also looked at yeah? the coax. Yeah, you get okay. UTP and STP, those are twisted. Then the coaxial cable, briefly, we said that this is made out of copper and it is a single copper wire. A single copper wire. It has gotten very many layers. It has gotten three layers, and these layers are going to make the cable heavy. So you mm. expect coaxial cables to be heavy. Then you, how they look like, this is how the coaxial cable looks like in this peak. This is how it looks like. Then if you open this cable, you will come up with something like, like this one. So this, the, the, the second picture is showing you the inside part of coaxial cable, this one. So you look at the three layers we talked of, the outside insulation, in, insulation you look at the copper mesh, and this other one. So. That is how it looks like when you open it, when you open, when you put off this outer shield. 
And for coaxial, when you look at the advantage, it transmits faster than UTP unshielded. Then it is easy to install. And since there is a lot of layers, it is going to be resistant to signal interference. The disadvantage, it is expensive when you compare rich to twisted pair cable. Then it is heavy because it has more layers. And lastly, we look at fiber optic. This is how these cables look like. So you get to know how each cable looks like. You get to know the advantage of this cable over this the other cable. For example, we said that coaxial cable are resistant over twisted. So you get to know that fiber, uh, these three types of cables, you, you will get to know that fiber optical cables are the ones that, that are spurred. In terms of speed, they transmit data faster. In terms of interferences, they do not get interferences easily. Um, then when you look at the disadvantage, because the quality of this fiber is high, you expect the cost to be high and the installation to be hard as well. So as you're dealing with fiber optical cables, the disadvantages, you look at the cost, the installation, and then the, the difficulties in splicing. So since these cables are very small, like human air, you connect like three of them to come up with one, so they are very difficult to connect, to bring back, to bring them together, like to merge them, because you do not use only a single one. You need to merge like two or three to come up with one. So briefly, that's it about those cables. Any other question? If there are no more questions, I would beg to stop here. Our time is out. Nicholas, your hand is up. I wanted to ask you where they can be applied. Oh, where they can be applied. OK, yes, we looked at this as well. So for fiber optical cables, we have seen that they can be used in, in, in telephone companies. So these telephone companies use these cables in, in data transmission. So you're able to receive, actually all these cables can be used in, in, uh, in, in telephone companies, depending on what they want. So you're able to receive a phone call or a message from your friend on a phone because of these fiber optical cables. They are mainly installed under the ground and are deep in the oceans, so it is where they they are connected. So you're able to get the the messages because of this. They transmit data, then through the the how do we call this airtel the antennas boosters something. So data is transmitted through these cables and then to to your phone. Then the coaxial cables, we said that these cables are also used in, in uh, TV wiring. So you go back, look at your TV, you look at the wires that are connected on the, on the TV, you will look, you will actually see some cables that look like coaxial cables. You'll be in position to see this kind of cable this yeah. one so and even, uh, I, sorry um i think even computers have them yeah even computers actually have them so these cables are, are used they can be used yeah even in computing in networking and in tv yeah, yes We can't hear you. 
Chibiriga, you have a question or Jotha? It's Jotha. Yes, Jotha. Jotham, we can't hear your question. I think it's your network. Maybe you can type the question in the chat. Jotham? Maybe his network is not fine. Okay. He can as well forward the question in the WhatsApp group. I mean, that group I will be able to answer that question. The problem we are always having some some questions and inquiries, but the problem is that we are not we cannot we cannot write any messages in the group. It's only for administrators to write messages. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay, you can inbox, no problem. You can inbox. I All think right. I think that was made because you are forwarding some some chats that are not relevant, I think. For that case, I don't know. Yeah, it is. It is the reason because at first you were able to chat, but no problem. If you have a question, you can inbox. I will be answering All that right. question. Yeah. Okay, thank you for joining us. We look forward to continue serving you. You can subscribe to our services. Our class here is only 500,000. For more even resources, you get to be taught, you get to access all the resources of all the subjects of that class and other resources like question prep questions, quizzes, you get to be assessed and evaluated. Thank you, a good evening. All right. Thank you. Welcome.